5G. And I, it's nice to come after after the previous speaker because you get much energy to the floor down here. So I should come down here and sit like Daniel too. And we but we want to do a wrap up because we've been here since uh, Monday. And it's now my time is right Thursday. So this is uh, four days together. We have covered a lot and uh, and the aim here is to kind of round that out. I think actually this morning's session has really rounded us out very nicely indeed. In fact, uh, FIG is all hand closing in on 150 years old, something like that. And this forum that I saw this morning is what I understand FIG was exactly set up to do. I've been to a few of these Commission 7 meetings. I'm sure Daniel and Orhan and others have been to many more. But each time you go to one, they are very, very different based on who is available to come and where they're being hosted. And I think that's a wonderful, wonderful thing. But notwithstanding the points that were just made, it really, really do come through clearly. There is some uh, high tech and there is some human touch needed. <coughs> this week we have covered both. So uh, we, we started the week with, uh, I think it was the, is it Molnit Chairman or was it Alex Chairman who, I think everyone was using this term, let's go together. And I think maybe that speaks to, to uh, Christine's uh, uh, requirement there, her argument. So that's what I take out of this week, let's go together. So on Monday, this is where, where we went and this is what we did. We, uh, we started with our opening ceremony and we had, saw both sides of the story. We saw there's many great challenges, and uh, Daniel was highlighting those, organization, food security, uh, all the problems within uh, that the SDGs tried to deal with, and then this view of, well, let's, let's go together and embrace the technological opportunity coming at us. Uh, we got a nice and excellent background from our Korean colleagues about the state of play here in Korea, and we um, learned about uh, what's been going on with both uh, Alex and Molin. And we also got a bit of an insight from the, the University Education Centre. Then we had these very nice country sharing activities where we, uh, we again heard more from the Korean side of things. We, we got a bit from Daniel on the SDGs and his experiences in Colombia. Nice presentation from Orhan on Turkey and, and emphasising his role more recently in the private sector and the need to be both politically and socially sensitive but at the same time have this good technical capacity. That is in the, in the end what our groups are in this room. Uh, Ian gave uh, an overview of Fit for Purpose as it's being played out in the Australian scene and in, in the Netherlands, uh, Theo, you gave us a very nice uh, introduction to what I would say is a very integrated approach in terms of technology integration but also institutional inter integration. <coughs> Tuesday, we, we kept going. We kept going and we had a really dense day on Tuesday. We had a lot of content that we went to, went through and I'm not going to go through all that, but just suffice to say we started in the morning session, uh, specifically looking in on smart cities, the concept and digital twins. We, we talked about the strong developments and saw lots of presentations from Korea, how you're really driving this through government, but also partnership uh, with uh, private sector and, and even municipal level. We saw that it's, it's about getting data, that those, any, any concept like that needs data and the data needs to be uh, in real time. But at the end of the day, it relies on accurate, authoritative and available land information to make those systems work. Um, there were still challenges and I think some of these things are still in pro prototype or demonstration phase, but I think we can see that that future is now, is now actually starting to come here. Then in the afternoon, I guess we took the, the other side of it, uh, which was very much looking at uh, the 70% and we started the discussion from GLTN colleagues talking about this 70% of unreported or unrecognised land rights. So very much in stark contrast to what we've seen in the morning and trying to grapple that all together and why, what, what is our role as Commission 7, are we doing this or that, I think is something we have had to grapple with over the last few decades because it's, uh, it's a problem that's, that's been there for a long time and it's not going away. Uh, we talked about fit for purpose land administration, uh, about incremental improvement. Uh, we had quite a few discussions on what's the role of the private sector in all this. Um, uh, we got some from our industry presenters, uh, Esri and uh, Laika. We got a look at what's coming in terms of the technological front and also that importance of the geodetic basis for all the work we do. 
Uh, and then we had the final session, which was uh, again taking us a bit more local to Korea, which I thought was wonderful, where we got some student presentations and really looking at some of the research work going on here inside uh, inside uh, Korea around the use of UAVs, the combination of photogrammetry and lidar techniques, um, that even the addressing issues and upgrading that here in Korea. Uh, we saw a little bit on LADM, which is the international standard ISO 19152 for uh, land administration data models. Uh, and we also had a very nice and uh, long presentation on the history of cadastral science, <laughs> which I think we all really appreciated that before, before uh, dinner. So I don't want to fall into that. <laughs> Wednesday, Daniel became world famous. He was on the biggest uh, flat screen television I've ever seen. And uh, we had a wonderful morning, an exciting morning at at the expo, at the and, and a lot of that discussion was around industry 4.0 and the concept around that. Uh, we heard a lot about this disruption, and that was presented as an opportunity. And we heard about SDGs, and they were also presented by Orhan as an opportunity. And then this 5G uh, opportunity also, is, uh, which is going to change our lives and the things we do, at least in, in, in the short term, in the developing context. What I would say, just to speak to the last comment. Uh, when you go, and I've been to some of the countries you were mentioning too and worked in those contexts, there's a concept of technology leapfrog. And um, that means you, you don't necessarily need to go through all the stages of development that other Western countries might have gone through. So one thing I noticed working in parts of Eastern Africa is that whilst they may not have a copper network that's kind of across the country, their 4G and 5G networks, or not 5G, but their 4G networks are often better than some of the coverage I was getting in Australia or even in the Netherlands at times. So that's one thing to think about this technology opportunity that 5G brings. We got to go to the ex exhibition and had a very controlled uh, look through that, which kept, kept us on time. And uh, there was, I think the scale and size of that for a national exhibition was, was for me quite impressive. 50 million people, but we had a whole intergeo style um, uh, trade show that you, you, you can see really all the private sector and, and government sector innovation coming out. So fantastic. And then we had our nice uh, afternoon session before going to Samsung to, uh, and we, we got again another mix of high tech human the STDM um, being discussed, and we heard about MAXA and PPPs again coming up as a discussion point. So, just at the final slide to, to round us out. And the idea was that we'd have a little bit more time and go around the room one more time, but maybe this is something we can do over lunch or even on the road to the demilitarized zone tomorrow. Is <laughs> what's your takeaway lesson for the week? And, and if you do have to, please send them through to the committee because we should uh, we do report on these uh, on these weeks. But here's a, a few um, key lessons as as we sort of brainstorm. And it's the first dump of them, but. I think we sort of had this one thread going through the week, but sort of two views on it. So the one thread being what Commission 7 stands for, which is good land administration, effective land administration, good land information supporting administration and management of land. But at the same time, this two uh, different stories of uh, the, the, what, the wealth to do, the established, the complete systems versus those where we're some, somehow still, still getting started, still getting getting agreement on how best to progress. So I think we can say, I, I echo Daniel's call earlier, Korea uh, and, and, and Orhan's view. Korea, really world leaders, you've shown us this week, when you get it right, what it can look like um, in, in terms of a functional and, and supportive land administration that supports the people. Um, smart and immediate cities have clearly moved from, from concept to reality. The digital twin concept is, I think, a new one for many people, and in many ways it looks like an extension of the virtual country concept or the virtual city concept into underpinning that NSDIs, and this is perhaps the latest iteration of that, and I think that draw out the importance of 3D land information. We saw uh, technology throughout the whole week and lots of developments happening in that space, and we saw from Korea uh, so Taiwan this morning, which is blockchain, and then PPPs, um, as a tool both in the developed sector, but also increasingly being thought about in, in the uh, developing sector. So on the left-hand side, you really see one side of the story, the high tech. And then on this other side, we've got the SDGs that we all need to be cognizant and aware of, and, and uh, um, the idea that responding to those means no silver bullets. Every country context is different. They have different institutional, political, economic, 
legislative arrangements that you have to build the system around, but FFPLA as a tool for helping to do that um, was discussed for the week. Um, and, and also this seeking, seeking the middle ground, not being so cognizant of a uh, top-down versus bottom-up approach, can we bring them together, perhaps with the role for entrepreneurship? This is also uh, a lesson we have. But the final one is we must go together. We must go together. Let's go together, as we were told from, uh, from day one. And uh, I will hand back. So that's a summary of some lessons. But maybe you have your own. So discuss it over lunch. We will now hand to Daniel, and then he will hand to Yun, and then we'll be escorted to the lunchroom. Thank you. Big, that's a fantastic summary. Big yeah. round of applause for